it looks like it looks like uh, people are just joining in on zoom we are now live on uh, youtube as well namaskaram welcome everybody shubha sayam sarvebhya we'll wait for a couple of more minutes it's 81 we'll wait for a couple of more minutes for everybody to join in oh i see comments of jay shri ram jay shri ram uh jay shri sitaram ji and i have already learnt it from the channel and i'm very grateful for it that's amazing to hear pravarshan ji what a beautiful name pravarshan amazing name um i'm i am happy that you have learnt it yes this almost two years ago we've had this chant on the sanskrit channel uh, but uh, there was never a learn it live kind of a session namaskaram welcome shiva prasad ji jay shri ram suraj ji and whom who else do we have uh, manju manju ji namaskaram sandhya harita ji namaskaram pb venkat ji thank you so much for the membership sahan ji welcome namaskaram ai bhavan namaskaram namaskaram everyone we'll uh, get started oh this is not what i wanted for the first slide we have three topics for today mm -hmm. yes namaskaram welcome are you born i i hope i'm saying it right uh, it's been really long since i visited sri lanka really really long almost 10 years ago uh, but thank you for the sinhala help and uh, yes let's get started guys welcome everybody on zoom as well members on uh, youtube live who are watching right now if you are if you are a member uh, not the early access and badges guys uh, there are members only live streams members there is a zoom link and password you can join us directly on zoom we have a couple of members already i think uh, notifications need to go a couple of minutes at least half an hour early to members also so that there is one more reminder to join directly on zoom um एग्री बिजनेस नेपाल बोल रहे हैं आपके श्रीमद भगवद गीता मैं रोज सुनता हूँ बहुत बढ़िया थैंक यू सो मच नेपाली में भी करने की इच्छा है मेरी लेकिन देखेंगे नेपाली लैंग्वेज में भाषा में और नेपाली अनुवाद के साथ देखेंगे लेट्स सी हाउ फार वी कैन डू भगवद गीता और एनी अदर स्त्रोत्रम दैट वी डू इन एज मेनी लैंग्वेज एज पॉसिबल इज माई ऑडियो ओके गाइज और इज इट बेटर नाव because there's a lot of noise going on so i enable noise cancellation mm. is this better audio is it was good before also okay karnataka namaskara chenna gidira was is it before now rajnish ji or was it better before there's no change lovely then i'll keep the noise cancellation on Thank you so much Shiva Prasad ji thank you uh, I'm glad you like my voice um Radheshyam Amlan Priyadarshan Mishra namaskaram um uh, Nagaselvam Sharma that's an interesting name North India South India you are a mix of the entire south and north Nagaselvam ji I don't know Nagaselvam Selvam is usually a south indian surname but Sharma is north indian surname any I know a south couple of South Indians who are Sharmas as well, but no Tamils. So, anyway, Jai Shri Ram to everybody. Uh, today we are going to cover these three topics quickly. Um, before I come to what these three topics are, um, a quick update on what we have done so far, what we are going to do in the future, and where we are right now. Um, so, in the last live stream, we had gone through. texts regarding the four purusharthas we understood what purushartha itself means what dharma artha kama and moksha the four fundamental pursuits of every human being means and um, all the all, all human pursuit be it 
visiting temples studying not doing any work whatever kind of work earning money or doing yoga visiting any any kind of work these are the four fundamental pursuits of every human being which is dharma artha kama and moksha we looked at a lot of texts which pertain to all of these four purusharthas we looked at um, four texts corresponding to dharma kama uh, artha and moksha each um and uh, i said i'll share uh, all those texts in their original it's still in progress that work we are compiling all the original source texts it's taking some more time to find original sanskrit sources for all those works that i had mentioned but patanjali yoga sutras we had already covered bhagavad gita we had already covered isha vasya upanishad we had already covered these three corresponding to moksha uh pertaining to the other three we had not really covered much dharma artha and kama but we had done a lot of stotras on this channel uh, going there there was a lot of devotional content already going forward uh, uh, we will do we'll cover all these shastras also uh, after today's live stream tomorrow there is another live stream at 8 pm uh, practicing uh, sangeeta shastra with the help of venu or basuri um, by studying sangeeta ratnakara so please make sure that you have a reminder set for that also and uh, we'll see what kind of topics to cover in the future as well but this ramaraksha stotram the telugu video has already gone out telugu maatlade vallanta adi chusaru anukuntunanu so sk ratnam ji is saying in youtube comments me audio baane undi swami na peru uday andi meer you need not call me swami or guruji i am just a sanskrit teacher i am not some kind of i am a spiritual seeker myself i am doing my sadhana thank you so much um all right so yeah telugu audio was out so i hope you guys found those translations useful work is all, again under way to translate it into other regional languages i don't know how many will be able to do this time 30th 30th <laughs> i wanted to do some kind of an accent 30th or 30th to keep it clearer uh, 30th of this month is shri rama navami um so on that occasion there are many chants on shri rama and we i thought this is the most apt to go through to explore for uh, this shri rama navami so what we'll go to do in this session uh, these videos all are already published so you might have seen some of these videos already so these are those videos ath shri ram raksha stotram asya shri so ram raksha all our videos have been asya right all the rishika rishi you know the shri sita ram chandra devata are given in both regional language script Sita and in english Shakti and there is a moving underline so that shri everybody can Hanuman follow out of the pronunciation of it is shri and then there is a meaning below it translation we have been doing that in english uh, telugu is also available now andariki namaskaram ee video lo manam shri ramakrishna stotra ni chadivedu video i had mentioned shlokam yokka arthani grahistu ela chadavalo nerchu have to go through మొదటి సారి ఈ వీడియో చూసేటప్పుడు అండర్లైన్ బెస్ట్ ఇఫ్ యునో ఫస్ట్ టైమ్ యు ఆర్ వాచింగ్ దిస్ వీడియో యూ పే అటెన్షన్ యాజ్ మచ్ యాజ్ అటెన్షన్ యాజ్ పాసిబుల్ టు ద అటరెన్సెస్ టు ద ప్రొనౌన్సియేషన్ ఆఫ్ సౌండ్స్ ఇన్ ఈచ్ శ్లోక ఆర్ ఈచ్ లైన్ అండ్ దెన్ సెకండ్ టైమ్ యూ కెన్ కీప్ దాట్ స్తోత్ర రన్నింగ్ ఇన్ ద బ్యాక్గ్రౌండ్ అండ్ జస్ట్ పే అటెన్షన్ టు ద మీనింగ్స్ సెపరేట్లీ బికాస్ టు లుక్ అట్ ద stotram also and to read the meaning also is a little difficult we had tried doing uh, uh narrated meanings a couple of times but it looked like not many people were interested in narrated meanings they were only interested in uninterrupted chants and listening to it in the background so i there is a narrated meanings version also for ramaraksha stotram uh, but that i had not uploaded i'll upload it soon and keep it members only on or you know private because looks like not many people are interested it doesn't reach people at scale and one thing that one more thing that i had learned uh, from being more 
YouTube savvy, analytics savvy is you should make sure that every video on video the views are consistent. Even if people, some people really find it useful, you put something which is which gives YouTube less views, it'll demote all the future videos also. This is something that I had known, but I really have to work on now. So this narrated meanings of Ramaraksha Stotram will come up, uh, but only for members again. So, but everybody else, you can go through it first and notice how to pronounce it clearly. The next time around, you can pay attention to the meanings below. And uh, as this chant is running, read the meanings. And the third time, you can now chant it along with me in, you know, join your voice and uh, chant it along with me. That's what I had uh, narrated in the Telugu video. If other language people, you are wondering what this guy is going on about in Telugu language in this video, that was it. Um, in this video, there are today's live stream. We are going to cover three topics. First, we'll go through the lyrics of Shri Ramaraksha Stotram. There is a very clear head, body, and tail part for Shri Ramaraksha Stotram. The very title of this composition called Rama Raksha Stotram is a plea, is a prayer to Lord Rama that may he protect, extend his protection. He is known for to be an excellent warrior, um, Yodha. So it's seeking Rama and Lakshmana both, in fact, to be protectors of oneself, one's body, uh, and one's fate. So we'll go through the lyrics themselves. We'll go through some uh, overall structure of how the stotra is organized, what the first few shlokas are, what they contain, what the raksha part is. And that raksha part is where there is a plea towards various facets of Sri Rama. He is the king of Ayodhya. He was before that the son of Dasharatha. And uh, he was the dearest to Vishwamitra. And he, he was a brother. He, was, he, well, he conducted many, many roles in his lifetime. Um, and so in every different aspect, of him is sought after and is prayed to and the seeking is may each one individual aspect of Sri Rama protect different aspects of my own body, my head, my forehead, my, my eyes, my drishti, my ears, my mouth, my tongue, my shoulders, until my very feet may different roles that uh, Shri Rama has played, may he in all of those roles come to my protection and form a kind of a kavacha. And this kavacha, this, this is the emotional connect behind this totra, this is the meaning of it, this is the word, words behind it. But if looked at this, there, this has been the goal in many stotras. There is Durga Kavacham, there is Subramanya Kavacham, there is uh, Ganesha Kavacham. There are many kinds of Kavachas, even, which Kavacha literally means armor. Uh, it's, you know, the protective plating around the body. So, yoga gives us with a kind of Kavacha. There is the Kavacha of Ojas that they say is built around. And this these kind of chants also have that capability of building that ojas and a protective cocoon of energy around us. It's the, the chant itself, as we chant it with attention, you, I mean, the meaning of it with the emotion behind it is, of course, extremely sweet and very profound and very heart-touching. But just the sounds of it go deeper and they, in fact, form a protective shield of energy around the person who chants it. And that is in fact mentioned as Palashruti multiple times in the shloka, in other verses, in other shlokas that come at the end of the shloka, uh, end of this totra. So we'll, uh, in the second image, we'll look at what those different aspects of Sri Rama are, you know, that correspond to each part of the human body. 
how he is sought after and at the end it says patu ramah akhilam vapuh which is said continuously as patu ramo khilam vapuh so may lord rama protect patu my entire body but before that comes step by step by step seeking of me uh, raghava protect my crown or the uh, top of my head and like that and until the very end the vibhishana shridah the one who gave riches to vibhishana uh, may he protect my feet so from head to toe there are different aspects of shri rama which are sought for protection we'll look at them in this next one and finally we'll go to any kind of q and a sessions on zoom and we'll take a couple of quick questions on youtube as well so that is today's session buddha kaushika there is there are multiple uh, uh, interpretations as to is buddha kaushika this rishi was he vishwamitra was he vyasa there are a few uh, interpretations matbe matbhed hai unme bhi uh but buddha kaushika we can just look at it as buddha kaushika let's just take him uh, at his name uh value right now let's not go into the controversial statements at the moment but the story is um this was this stotra came as a dream to sage buddha kaushika that is the story that also comes up along in the stotra in one way uh and uh, one more thing before uh, we get started with the words of this with the sto- uh, shlokas in this stotra one update is uh, there is this beautiful event that is coming up next weekend in hyderabad where i live currently uh, which is organized by these two extremely skilled senior uh, uh, dancers performing artists of kuchipudi and vilasini natyam uh dr ananda shankar jain and dr anupama kailash this event is named ramayana kalpavriksham most of you might already have uh, seen the reel that i have made uh, had made about it and posted on uh, youtube twitter and instagram it's a 3 day event this ramayana kalpavriksham and it has amazing set of artists and speakers ami ji is talking sai deepak ji is talking uh, vishakha hariyakka is talking uh he she is giving a pravachanam vinay is coming vinay varanasi um and rahul anna who is a wonderful artist who makes garlands and who weaves who's a who's an excellent artist very very um how do i talk describe him he's an all rounded artist he can sing he can sketch he can weave garlands he's amazing so he is coming and teaching uh, his craft so if you are in and around hyderabad please even if you are not i would say i would urge you to come be in hyderabad for this but that would be a stretch so if you are already in hyderabad this is definitely something that you should not miss uh the link i had already given in that reel but the short url is bit.ly forward slash rkv23 please note this down you can go uh, check this link later you will find the entire schedule for the three days what events are happening what performances what talks what um, uh, workshops all the talks are free free of cost anybody can come and attend these workshops which require raw material or you know hall set up everything for that there is a very nominal fee and for performances to support the artist there is a very nominal fee uh, but all the talks are free if you are in hyderabad already there are almost 1000 tickets which have so been sold out uh, please check that out if, uh, and do not miss this Mm. Ambika Akka is asking how can be a member being a member on YouTube is quite straight forward Akka. I actually opened up YouTube memberships because people were finding it difficult to take patreon patreon.com memberships uh so I thought uh because it will get a little you know uh messy between all these different perks between patreon.com and YouTube but then it's much easier to be a member on YouTube so I enabled those please uh check that out bengaluru bengaluru chennai kolkata already have such vibrant cultural scenes i'm not there in bengaluru yet but if i'm there i'll i'll see how to con- uh, you know um, do anything around it but all right let's now go towards um, 
द लेटर्स द वर्ड्स ऑफ रामरक्षा स्तोत्रम वेर इज इट राइट इज दिस विजिबल आई होप इट इज विजिबल then there are many questions popping up uh but if if we go behind all of those will not be able to progress i hope the letters on screen are clear the chant starts atha shri ram raksha stotram uh atha the word itself is is given the same stature as om uh will not do a whole detailed elaboration on atha itself but it its literal meaning is and now after doing everything after going having done everything now we have arrived at this moment in time where this is in front of us and we give ourselves fully to this atha shri ram raksha stotram and then there are there is this kind of a recognition a kind of invocation and you know uh paying one's respects to what makes this stotra who are the main contributors to this stotra and uh, these lines declare that atha can i go all the way up or do i get cut off oh oh here i get cut off okay asya shri ram raksha stotra mantrasya so this stotra is not just uh, a series of sentences in praise they also function as a mantra they are very potent and can be used as mantra and of this ram raksha stotra mantra the sage who had first realized these lines is sage buddha kaushika and the shak uh the main deity who is being worshiped in this is shri sita ramachandra ramachandra as the consort of goddess sita of devi sita the poetic meter in which this is composed is anushtuk anushtuk chanda the energy that makes this function is devi sita herself and uh, the keelakam keel the hindi word means a peg or a nail in the ground which supports a structure if there is a tent that is set up it is the nail in the ground which holds it firm so it has got something to do with the mooladhara chakra the keelakam what acts as the foundation for this energy to grow sita is got a sita is the energy that propels that powers this stotram but the foundation on which that energy is built is hanuman so hanuman ki lakam and viniyoga where is it used in what how is the prayoga or viniyoga of this is done it's in uh, pleasing for preeti of shri ramachandra through the practice of japa japa is repeated chanting of uh, this stotram that is how this is used that is the meaning of this first phrase and then there is dhyanam how should one meditate upon the form of shri rama what is the form of shri rama that one needs to meditate upon uh, the very first word that describes him is ajanu bahun the one whose shoulders are uh, bahu is you know bhuja bahu bahubali as one's arms one whose arms stretch out until one's knees uh, that seems a little uh, confusing as to how can somebody's hands stretch out if we stand it won't go all the way until the knees they fall short it is actually when one is sitting comfortably then hands of course reach very comfortably to the knees and the one who has that you know stretched out arms ajanu until the uh, janu which means knees the one whose hands are stretched out comfortably who is seated we know he is seated because in the third line he says there is on his lap goddess devi uh, devi sita is also seated so he is sitting down and on his left lap goddess sita is 
also sitting so that is why he is ajanubahu whose hands whose arms are stretched out until his knees i could probably like this right so if it is like this this hand if you are seated in a um vajrasana or padmasana or ardha siddhasana or siddhasana uh, hands can reach out until the knees anyways so dhrita shara dhanusham who is equipped with dhrita who who wields uh, shara dhanusham sharas are arrows and dhanusha are uh, dhanusha is his uh, bow, uh, bow i don't want to explain this word by word i think it might get a little boring i don't know um, how you guys finding it so these let me oh, give you a quick overview the key verb in this sentence is dhyayet one must meditate upon the very first word what kind in what form must one meditate goddess uh, shri rama that is described in all the other words how is he he is the one whose hands stretch out until his knees he is the one upon whose um, you know who is also wielding the uh, bow and arrow who is seated in padmasana baddha padmasana stham who is clad in golden robes pitam vasaha vasanam the one who is draped in golden garments uh nava kamala kamala dala spardhi netram the ones whose eyes have a spardha a fight with nava kamala dala the petals of a fresh freshly bloomed lot, uh, lotus so the one whose eyes give a tough competition in their beauty to the freshly blossomed lotus petals so prasannam the one who is pleasant nana alankara deeptam the one who has, who is shining with various kinds of ornaments vamang karudha sita mukha kamala milal lochanam this whole thing is actually one word milal lochanam milat plus lochanam becomes milal lochanam the ones whose eyes meet what do, what do uh, his eyes meet sita mukha kamala his eyes lochanam milat meet the lotus like face of devi sita sita mukha kamala milal lochanam where is that goddess sita vama anka arudha sita vama anka is the left lap upon uh, his left lap goddess devi uh, devi sita is seated and her lotus like face his eyes meet and that person who has such eyes has such gaze one must meditate upon nirada abham abha is of the glow nirada is that which gives the the sound the is in giving nira is water so nirada is a cloud what kind of a cloud a rain cloud because that is about to give water so nirada abham is of the color of a rain cloud so he is of a dark complexion one can say he is of a dark uh, you know uh, there is dark blue hue also they say which means his aura is that of a dark blue color electric blue of that of a fresh rain cloud they say um so of to the one of that kind of complexion one must meditate upon iti dhyanam thus one meditates before going toward going towards the pathana of this stotra and then uh, all these other shlokas they are kind of a prelog they say charitam raghunathasya shatakoti pravistaram ekaikam aksharam pumsam mahapataka nashanam so even this story the legend of shri rama which runs on towards shatakoti hundreds of crores of sounds syllables ekaikam aksharam every single syllable in it mahapataka nashanam is capable of uh, destroying the greatest sins of humans pumsam uh, and then all these other shlokas the prelog to all to the entire stotra is quite straightforward the meanings are very straightforward dhyatva nilotpalashyamam ramam rajiva lochanam janaki lakshmano petam jata mukuta manditam so this all of this straightforward how what kind of shri rama should one meditate upon how 
you know what are his characteristics swalilaya jagat dratum avirbhutam what kind of a birth did he have avirbhuta is the one who has been who has taken birth who has appeared why has he appeared swalilaya swa is his own leela is cosmic play through his own cosmic play jagat dratum in order to save trana is saving so that is the same dhatu from which mantra comes remember mantra the second second sound tra is to protect so this is jagat trana so jagat is everything that exists it comes from jangama jag which means that which is set in motion the uh, so all of this creation in order to protect it jagat tratum avirbhutam the one who has taken birth in order to protect the entire creation so that kind of rama one must uh, meditate upon mm. and this fourth shloka is when this seeking starts so what kind of a stotra is this rama raksham pathet pragnyah papa ghnim sarva kamadam papa ghni is that which destroys ghna all papas all sins and also at the same time it is also sarva kama da this da from nirada da is something that gives what does this give sarva kama all of one's desires the dharmartha kama that we had seen before in the last live stream so this is a stotra which also also destroys one's sins and also provides fulfills one's desires and that must be chanted and the second line of fourth shloka is where this seeking starts patu patu is short for palayatu which means may he protect may he protect what shirah my head who may who protect this raghavah shiro me raghavah patu so as you are chanting the this the lines from here on i want you guys to be extra mindful of what each uh, what each phrase conveys so until now the meanings have been a little generic right if you even if you chant it out aloud there is some kind of a benefit but from here on as strongly as you visualize it as strong your seeking is the more effective the stotra is so shiro me raghava patu literally means may lord raghava protect my head shiro me raghava patu this is seen in um this sketch where is it one second you guys can uh, open up the text by yourself because i'll be i'll have to juggle between uh, this and this to show you guys shiro me raghava patu so in this um, sketch you see what limb corresponds with which aspect which role that rama had played in the last at the very end there'll be patu ramo khilam vapuhu patu rama akhilam vapuhu may lord rama protect the entire body but it starts from the very top shiro me raghava patu so this raghava corresponds to the head or shiraha is even the top of the head or the crown the next phrase is bhalam dasharathatmajah make sure that alpa pranas and maha pranas are proper when you are uh, pronouncing these words but bhalam this forehead of mine dasharath atmaj may the son of dasharath may lord rama in his role as a son of dasharath may he protect my forehead kausalyeyo drishav patu drishah is one eye because they are both eyes the dvivachana prayoga is drishav like rama ramau rama drishah drishav drishah so both my eyes kausalyeyo drishavpat kausalya yah is the son of devi kausalya vishwamitra priya shruti 
may Lord Rama, in his role as the one who is dear to sage Vishwamitra, may he protect my ears. Ghranam patu makhatrata. Makha is a yagna. As the disciple of sage Vishwamitra, he is said to have gone and protected the yagnas when asuras were causing havoc. So that protector, makhatrata, protector of yagnas, May he protect ghranam, my sense of smell, my nose. And mukham saumitri vatsalaha. The one who has vatsalya or um, parental feeling or having a, a, taking somebody else as one's own child, that is vatsalya, the, the feeling of the other person being one's vatsa is vatsalya. And uh, what shall... Uh, who is this Vatsalya towards? Saumitri Vatsalaha. Towards the son of Sumitra, the one who was uh, who had a lot of Vatsalya towards him. May he protect my Mukham. Mukham Saumitri Vatsalaha. Uh, so the, may the affectionate towards Lakshmana protect my mouth. Once again, this is the sketch that will help us correlate each of these corresponding uh, organs with the roles of Lord Rama. Um, this uh, stotra also helps as a Sanskrit language lesson, which is kind of the most bare minimum way of using this stotram, which is to know various parts of names of the names of all different body parts in Sanskrit. So, Drushau, Nayane or Netre, the, both the eyes, Karnav, or uh, what was the word used for both the ears? Um, Shruti, both, both my ears. Vishwamitra, Priyaha, Patu. And we have from top, Raghavaha for head or Shiraha. Dasharathatmajaha uh, for forehead or Bhala Deshaha. Kausalyeyaha for eyes. Vishwamitra, Priyaha for ears. Makhatrata for nose. And Saumitri, Vatsalaha for mouth. And going forward, Jihvam Vidyanidhi Patu. May the Vidyanidhi, Vidyanidhi is the treasure of knowledge. He is, <laughs> uh, uh, he is, he is the topper of the batch. He is the best uh, student. He, is, he, is, uh, he has been the best student. He is the one who excelled at his studies. At the same time, he is the storehouse of knowledge itself and uh, as the Paramatma Parabrahma. So, Jihvam, may my tongue, that aspect of Lord Rama protect. Kantham, my throat, Bharata Vandita, the one who has been bowed, who is worshipped by Bharata. Skandhav, my shoulders, Divya Yudha Patu, the one who wields uh, divine astras, divine weapons, celestial weapons, may he protect my shoulders. And bhujaha are upper arms, bhagnesha karmuka. So the one who uh, uh, destroyed the karmuka or the bow of Lord Isha, of Lord Shiva. Bhagna Isha karmuka is the one, is Lord Rama in his role of the one who has destroyed who's shattered Shiva's bow, may he protect my arms. So you see in this sense, each of these words and the each of these body parts and the role that Lord Rama has played correspond to each other. There is some connection there. So Vidyanidhi, the storehouse of all knowledge, Vidya is said to, Saraswati is said to reside in the mouth as vak, on the tongue, on the tip of one's tongue. So may Vidyanidhi protect my tongue. Uh, the skandha of my shoulders, Divya Yudha, may the one who bears or carries the divine weapons, may he protect my shoulders. You'll see this connection on and on in many places. I'm sure the ones before also have such connections. He was the one who was looked upon fondly, lovingly by Kausalya. And uh, Shruti, his ears are being protected by the one who, our ears are being protected by the one who was dear to Vishwamitra. But what is the connection there? Of course, he got all his knowledge. He heard all that knowledge, Rama, from Vishwamitra. So, 
may the dear to vishwamitra protect my ears so there is this connection between the body part and the role that rama played karau sita pati patu the one who held the hand of goddess sita the consort of goddess sita may he protect my hands hridayam jamadagnya jit the my heart may the one who won over uh, lord jamadagni may he uh, not jamadagni the son of jamadagni uh, may he protect my heart uh, slight mistranslation uh, madhyam patu kharadvansi the one who destroyed who broke apart the asura khara may he protect my midriff the entire middle part of my torso uh, that may lord uh, rama as the one who vanquished the demon khara may he protect and nabhim my navel jambavad ashraya the one who gave refuge the one who provided shelter to lord jambavan may he protect my navel kati is waste sugrivesha the lord of sugriva may he protect my waist saktini saktini means hips both the hips its dvivachana prayoga may the prabhu the lord of hanuman hanumat prabhu may he protect my hips there is this connection right if you find some you know it might might be a little difficult to find it you might have to stretch that um connection a little uh, i don't know if i can do that for every single word but hanumat prabhu the one with a tail may the uh, may my hips be protected by the lord of the one with the tail makes sense there is some connection there uru is uh, the uh, the two thighs raghu tamah the best of raghus may he protect and what kind of raghu tamah he is the one who is who has uh caused krit the destruction vinasha of the clans of rakshasas raksha kula raksha kula vinasha krit uh raghutamah uru patu may he protect my thighs jannuni or knees so setu krit the one who has built the bridge across um <laughs> indian ocean to sri lanka uh may he protect my knees and jangha my uh, shins uh, are jangha uh, dasha mukhantaka the one who has killed the ten headed ravana why the shins what the connection is there i can't make it but there seem to be some connection between the other words for sure so there is something here also so maybe you guys can make those connections for yourself i don't want to you know stretch it too thin and and reach for far fetched connections which might not sound so convincing but anyway there exist connections between po- the body parts which are sought protection for and the role that rama had played as the protector of those bod- body parts padav finally the feet vibhishana shridah once again the sound the is the one who gives shridah is the one who provides or gives wealth vibhishana shridah the one who provided auspiciousness wealth to vibhishana may he protect my feet and patu ramah akhilam vapu may lord rama that that sound of rama may it protect my entire body so as one chants all these stanzas from 4th until 9th these five shlokas are the body the entire essence of ramaraksha stotram this is where that raksha is being sought and for which body part what form of rama what is the mantra this is actually also used in mantra form om raguthama raguthamaya namaha ओम भग्नेश कामुकाय नम सीतापत नम विभीषण श्रीदय विभीषण श्रीदायकाय ऐ गेस दैट इज श्री आई आई हैव टू चेक अप देर बट दश मुखाकाय नम सेतुत सेतुते नम 
like that there is individual mantra forms of each of this names in i'm sure there are ashtotras and sahasranamas for rama also happening and these words might also find their mantra forms in these in those kinds of chants but in this stotra as we are chanting shloka 4 to shloka 9 these are the body parts that you know once attention has to go through and that aspect of lord rama which did those kinds of deeds and held those kinds of roles throughout his life they if they can come to mind that is the best possible um way of enjoying relishing and making use of this chant so that has been the crux of ramaraksha stotram now comes from here on from 10th shloka forwards the so seeking for raksha has been done so from here on all, onwards already starts the phala shruti which is what are the kind of benefits that one can get by chanting ramaraksha stotram so yah sukriti the one who is you know punyatma sukriti is the one who has performed virtuous deeds the one the a pious one who reads this rama uh, rama balopetam the one with which has infused within it the strength of lord rama it this stotra etam rama balopetam raksham this protective shloka yah sukriti pathet the pious one who chants this sa chirayu that kind of a person has a enjoys a long life span sukhi becomes uh, you know enjoys blissfulness happiness putri enjoys progeny has good santana vijayi he becomes successful vinayi and he also becomes humble and not too arrogant within oneself so one gets all these kinds of virtuous qualities by the ch- chant of this stotra and that is the first shloka of the phala shruti so and this kind of phala shruti what are the different kinds of benefits they keep going on so none of these demons and and all these evil spirits um, that usually tend to you know hurt uh, they they have these negative tendencies to haunt people they would not even dare look at somebody who is protected by this chant is the gist of the 11th shloka so these beings demon spirits whatever they are the um ghosts one <laughs> uh, overarching term for all of them Uh, so they do not dare cause harm to anybody who is protected by this chant and uh, there is another phala uh, stotra once again shloka 12 which says ram rameti rama bhadreti rama chandreti vasmaran by memorizing by remembering these names of rama rama bhadra and rama chandra one a human being is not you know uh, uh, bound down lipyate is literally smeared or is not affected by any or any kind of sins and also relishes bhukti which is physical pleasure in this material realm and mukti which is liberation beyond so one finds this is that kind of astotra which has material benefits as well as spiritual benefits is what the 12th shloka states uh karastha sarva siddhaya all kinds of siddhis are in one's hands the one who does a sadhana of this stotram um labhate jaya mangalam one finds uh jaya victory and auspiciousness mangalam that is the 14th shloka's phala shruti so and that's kind of uh you know the phala shruti part of it uh these other shlokas from 15 onwards are various kinds of praises of of hanuman and of shri rama and praising different kinds of deeds that have happened in the past starting with how this stotra came to be how who wrote this stotram sej budha kaushika how did it happen uh, lord shiva himself came in, in in a dream to sej budha kaushika and ordered him to compose and you know compose this chant that he is now going to uh, provide 
uh, and he is going to narrate to sage buddha kaushika on shri rama and at the very end we see uh, a, a kind of a shloka in the names of in in as it has been uttered by lord shiva himself so lord shiva says to parvati in the very last shloka most of you know this shloka as shri rama rama rame ti rame rame manorame sahasra nama tatulyam rama nama varanane this lord shiva himself is uttering so uh, and to say buddha kaushika also shri uh, shiva himself is said to have narrated this entire rama raksha stotram and after waking up from his sleep say buddha kaushika is said to have composed it all down um so yeah from here on starts the different descriptions qualities of shri rama and uh, and praising the qualities of both rama and lakshmana uh, the, how they have lived what kind of uh, say life situations they have gone through how they have handled them all well and uh, 20th shloka is in my opinion the most heart touching of all of these shlokas that describe both of uh, these both of both rama and lakshmana and uh, i i think uh, we had also made yeah not i think i know for sure there is another video on youtube um describing the beauty of this shloka and how this is such a beautiful shloka to chant and uh, and relish so this goes uh, i i guess by now those of you who have been uh, watching the videos might know how to chant this would anybody like to chant this on zoom guys anybody who already knows the stotram okay i i see there have been a lot there been many more people who have joined us anybody you yeah yeah we will go one second let me check uh what's going on on youtube yeah please go ahead vivek slower 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 yes ha 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 that that tune have you remember uh, have you memorized mm -hmm. yeah yeah yes yes thank you so much nicely done but you have split the sandhis at a couple of places uh, rama lakshmana vagrata but very well done um okay what comments are happening on youtube thank you so much uh, shri devi ji and uh, um vaibhav ji says i have learned the full meaning from your past videos glad to hear it thank you for being here again uh but this stotram this this particular shlokam let me chant one more time because this is my favorite also ata sajja dhanusha vishu sprasha vakshaya shugani shanga sangina rakshanaya mama rama lakshmana vagrata pathi sadaiva gachhata the meaning of this is so heart touching it's it's insanely it just melts one's heart so it says uh, may both rama and lakshmana you, i'll i'll just read it out uh, equipped with their bows with their hands touching sprusha with their hands readily you know alert and touching the arrows uh, packed with you know carrying heavy fully loaded quivers on their shoulders aashuga nishanga sanginau rakshanaya mama for my protection rama lakshmanau pathi sadaiva gachhatam agrata pathi sadaiva gachhatam for my protection in this way may they always move for move ahead in my path for my protection so it's just seeking both these brothers who have already gone through so much pavam uh to be in the in my own protection walking in a path of my own choosing going ahead of me 
and giving me that protection so if there is one shloka in my heart that combines that just boils down the entire gist of ramarakshana stotram from head to feet all that is great it's all mantra fied and it's very you know it's potent in its own right but the emotional depth behind this shloka is just at another level so this is my favorite once again आत सज्ज धनुषा विशुस्पृशा वक्षया शुगनिषंग संगिन रक्षणा मम राम लक्ष्मण वग्रत पथि सदैव गच्छता अफकोर्स देर इज ऑल्सो ए लॉट ऑफ स्कॉलरली प्रोफाउंडनेस टू दिस श्लोक देर इज स श श ऑल ऑफ एट एंड देर आर महाप्राण साउंड इट इट टेक्स युअर एंटायर ब्रेथ to to chant the shloka so one of my most favorites and then another kind of shlokas with similar meaning but not as beautiful but very profound in their own sense on how rama and lakshmana both must protect uh, must forever give their services in my protection um so more shlokas like that describing lord rama vedanta vedya the one who is who can be realized by the knowledge of vedanta so there are you know many many stories reminding reminding us again and again that while shri krishna lived here as the source of creation himself as god himself on the planet rama was not like that he never once there people still say there are there have been instances when he showed his um his incarnation his true nature as uh lord vishnu but generally it is understood that he was he led a very very normal regular human life and led by example but at the same time there are stotras which describe him as no different from the source of creation itself from as vishnu himself not uh, just one of his aspects not as somebody who has such attributes but as he himself so vedanta vedya yagneshah purana purushottamah all of these are words for lord vishnu and the one who is now manifest here as janaki vallabah as the husband of devi sita may that shriman that auspicious one aprameya the one who is immeasurable who is of immeasurable valor uh, aprameya parakrama he is of lord rama so that in these kinds of words through these kinds of praises itye iti etani is thus with these kinds of words and descriptions and adjectives japan nityam always chanting mad bhakta shraddhayanvita my devotee with who has that faith ashwamedhadikam punyam sampraapnoti na samshaya one begets a, a virtue of having performed uh, ashwamedha more virtue than that of ashwamedha yagna itself and more very simple just a name adjectives ra um, and but very beautiful simple shlokas in anushtup chanda Uh, there is this oh have we uh, skipped that one shloka there is this very beautiful shloka where, where uh, he is described through various names as many people in his life would have called him uh, you guys know what i what i'm referring to right ramaya raha ramaya rama bhadraya rama chandraya vedhase oh we are, that's yet to come yeah this one 27th uh the meaning of this shloka is quite straightforward ramaya to lord rama rama bhadraya to lord rama bhadra to rama chandra to vedhas is one of his names uh the one who is learned uh, raghunathaya to the lord of raghus nathaya to the lord of all to uh, 
Sita Yaf Pataye Namaha to the husband of Devi Sita, I bowed down. Now, uh, there people who give pravachanas, people who narrate stories, storytellers in essence, who um, not just explain meanings and and explain chandas and the poetic beauty behind it, but also spin a tale around it. try to uh, you know transport the listeners and audiences to a different world in um, though they you know they go deeper and find even more connections um i am a little hesitant when trying to find these connections i try to make sure that everything is as technical mathematical saying this is the udvibhakti this is the pratyaya this is the you know dhatu this is the meaning of it but there is this very popular um, storyteller storytellers interpretation where they say this shloka is referring to lord rama through the eyes of every character every other character in his life so rama ya the one who would call him rama is uh, who dasharatha and rama bhadra is the one he he is called as his rama bhadra by kaikeyi rama chandra by kausalya or the other way around and vedhas he is referred to as vedhas by uh, vishwamitra because he is his guru he refers to, to him as uh, vedhas raghunatha as uh, somebody else i don't remember natha by devi sita herself and sita pati by king janaka because he has given his daughter to uh, rama so janaka calls him sita pati sita calls him natha uh, raghunatha who calls him guys do you know in comments but this is that is not implied anywhere in this shloka but it's a storyteller's interpretation as i've told uh, yeah maybe may, maybe uh, uh you know one of his brothers is calling him raghunath uh like that different kinds of all these words are words used to address him by different people in his life there is this interpretation just wanted to put that across uh you'll find many many of these articles and stories online and videos also explaining this shloka that this is the meaning of this shloka but that is not implied anywhere it's just you know beautifully narrated and and interpreted and there are more um shlokas which act as beautiful bhajan content shri ram ram raghunandan ram ram shri ram ram bharata graj ram ram shri ram ram rana karkash ram ram shri ram ram sharanam bhav ram ram like that very heartfelt very soothing very uh, chant worthy kind of uh, stanzas shri ram chandra charanau manasa smarami shri ram chandra charanau vachasa grunhami shri ram chandra charanau shirasa namami shri ram chandra charanau sharanam prapadye very simple to understand kind of stanzas mata ramo my mother is lord rama mat pita ram chandra my father is rama swami mat sakha my lord my friend my everything sarvaswam is lord rama this shloka says there is this one stanza which is very beautiful dakshine lakshmano yasya vame tu janaka thaja purato marutir yasya tam vande raghunandanam there is a similar stanza for uh, uh, krishna as well vame yasya sthita radha uh, but we will not go there i had covered this in a different reel while exploring gujarat uh, but this one is again very beautiful loka bhiramam ranaranga dhiram rajivanetram raghuvamshanatham karunyarupam karunakaram tam 
ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಚಂದ್ರಂ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೆ ಅಂಡ್ ಎ ಕಪಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಅದರ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕಾಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ಮನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮನ್ ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಮನ್ ಥರ್ಟಿ ತ್ರೀ ಇಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಹನುಮಾನ್ ಸೊ ಹಿ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಫೈಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ರೆಷನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸ್ತೋತ್ರ ವಾಲ್ಮೀಕಿ ಫೈಂಡ್ಸ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಫೈಂಡ್ಸ್ ಅ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಫಾರ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಯು ನೋ ಅಡ್ರೆಸ್ಸಿಂಗ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಸೆಜ್ ವಾಲ್ಮೀಕಿ ಕೂಜಂತ ರಾಮ ರಾಮೇತಿ ಮಧುರಂ ಮಧುರಾಕ್ಷರಂ ಆರುಹ್ಯ ಕವಿತಾ ಶಾಖಾಂ ವಂದೇ ವಾಲ್ಮೀಕಿ ಕೋಕಿಲಂ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಇನ್ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ ಟು ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಟು ಸೇಜ್ ವಾಲ್ಮೀಕಿ ವೆರಿ ಸಿಂಪಲ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕಾಸ್ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಆಪದಾಂ ಅಪಹರ್ತಾರಂ ದಿಸ್ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ವೆರಿ ಸ್ಪೆಷಲ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಐ ಗೆಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬಿನ್ ಕವರ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಅ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ವೀಡಿಯೋ ದಿಸ್ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ಇಫ್ ಐವ್ ಡನ್ ಇಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಬಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಒನ್ is this shloka has the word rama is referring to rama in all the seven vibhaktis in all the seven conjugations of sanskrit grammar so the first one is ramo rajamani Ra- rama is a jewel among kings sada vijayate me hi be ever victorious ramam ramesham bhaje i worship rama in the first one he was a subject ramo rajamani sada vijayate rama the king of jewels may he be ever victorious in the second one he is an object ramam ramesham bhaje in the third phrase he is an instrument ramena abhihata nishachara chamu by rama the clusters of demons were vanquished the fourth one is i don't know the english versions of this oblative whatever else in sanskrit it is called chaturthi vibhakti which is used in the sense of sampradana which is to give something to somebody ramaya to rama i bow down ramaya tasmay namaha ramat nasti parayanam parataram apart from rama there is no other better destination one can have ramasya of rama dasosmi aham this this is very easy in english it is the uh sambandha which is the relationship i hope uh it's a uh, shashti vibhakti uh, ramasya dasosmi aham rame in rama that preposition kind of a conjugation rame chittalaya sada bhavatu me may my my may the immersion of my mind chittalaya sada always bhavatu may it be in rama rame and the final one is sambodhana which is bho rama mam uddhara he rama uplift me so rama ha ramam ramena ramaya ramat ramasya rame rama so this is a very uh, beautiful um, grammatically um, well formed shloka which many uh, sanskrit teachers love and would and and insist on being the first shloka that is chanted before their classes and the last of these is the most simple but the most potent of all shlokas it just says if you can't do all this if you don't have that just say rama thrice in and in effect it is more powerful than chanting all the thousand names of lord vishnu isn't that convenient <laughs> uh so this is said to be uh, uttered by lord shiva himself to devi parvati he says uh, oh beautiful faced one oh auspicious faced one varanani vara is great beautiful auspicious uh, anana is countenance face oh varanani shri rama 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 iti rame manorami not even out loud within one's heart uh by just by chanting this rama 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 i find utmost bliss within my heart and that is comparable tulyam tulya is tol uh, tulna or it's comparable to chanting the sahasra nama the thousand names of lord vishnu is what this stotra ends in and thus rama raksha stotram which has been um uh, compiled by sage buddha kaushika which was narrated to narrated to him in his dream by lord shiva himself is now complete once again uh, the one 
image that i would like to leave you guys with at the end of this is this set of uh roles that lord rama had played and the dif- different body parts from the top of one's head to the tip of one's toe all the different body parts and their sanskrit names and seeking lord rama's protection for each and one every one of them with this image i'll post this um on instagram as a story and you can take a screenshot of this probably i'll put this up in the same folder that i have uh, shared with patrons and members for downloadable resources so guys uh, uh i i i hope everybody who is a patron and youtube member has again in that in those particular tiers have found access to the um to the mp3 files to the audio chant and the pdf files with the lyrics and the meanings and the documents the word documents um in the google drive folder and on patreon.com i'll add this image there with you guys but otherwise you can just take a screenshot of it right now mm all right with that we come to the end of today's session we'll continue with question and answers um, and if you guys want to practice any shlokas with me now and uh, you know correct your pronunciations get your meanings and any kind of questions clarified you can come to zoom guys but on youtube let me now pay some attention to youtube comments and questions and we'll end this here and we'll come to zoom thank you so much raghu kiran ji what a beautiful name again raghu kiran one more name for for lord rama um uh, my pleasure you're welcome um uh, from leh ladakh these days trying to buy hard geeta from guided chant wonderful ravi kiran dhulipala telugu person in leh enjoy i don't know if it's you know business or pleasure at leh but glad you're learning bhagavad geeta there all the best thank you so much uh balesh or balesh i don't know raghuvanshi we have so many uh, rama themes and rama names we have uh, from the first name there was somebody uh, what was the name there pravarshan uh, to many names of lord rama uh, my pleasure all right uh, one not eight names yeah ashtottara of lord rama might be there i'm sure there are some or the other uh, youtube videos that you'll find around these uh, other stotras but for shri rama navami which is coming up on 30th of march please make sure that at least once you can you listen to this stotram if you are in hyderabad make sure that you attend that uh, ramayana kalpavriksham the 3 day event uh, at ccrt in kondapur hyderabad mm, otherwise uh, thank you so much everybody for your attention and your time and for joining us on youtube this evening tomorrow there is another live stream that one will not be this content heavy and sanskrit heavy it will be a little more light but it will be practice heavy with vivek on the silent flautist please check that live stream the link is now live and uh, you will find uh, the silent flautists youtube channel also linked in that and with the help of that we will be learning uh, a few alankars the basics of uh pansuri of playing uh the venu and so see you tomorrow in tomorrow's live stream thank you so much for joining once again namaskaram shubharatri jai shri ram